the gold that glittered by o henry a story with a moral appended is like the bill of a mosquito it bores you and then injects a stinging drop to irritate your conscience therefore let us have the moral first and be done with it all is not gold that glitters but it is a wise child that keeps the stopper in his bottle of testing acid where broadway skirts the corner of the square presided over by george the voracious is the little rialto here stand the actors of that quarter and this is their shibboleth nit says i to froman you can't touch me for a kopeck less than two fifty per and out i walks westward and southward from the thespian glare are one or two streets where a spanish-american colony has huddled for a little tropical warmth in the nipping north the center of life in this precinct is el refugio a cafe and restaurant that caters to the volatile exiles from the south in the restaurant of el refugio are served compounds delightful to the palate of the man from capricorn or cancer altruism must halt the story thus long on diner weary of the culinary subterfuges of the gallic chef hie thee to el refugio there only will you find a fish blue fish shad or pompano from the gulf baked after the spanish method tomatoes give it color individuality and soul chili colorado bestows upon it zest originality and fervor unknown herbs furnish piquancy and mystery and but its crowning glory deserves a new sentence around it above it beneath it in its vicinity but never in it hovers an ethereal aura an effluvium so rarefied and delicate that only the society for psychical research could note its origin do not say that garlic is in the fish at el refugio it is not otherwise than as if the spirit of garlic flitting past has wafted one kiss that lingers in the parsley crowned dish as haunting as those kisses in life by hopeless fancy feigned on lips that are for others and then when conchito the waiter brings you a plate of brown fajoles in a carafe of wine that has never stood still between our porto and el refugio ah dios one day a hamburg american liner deposited upon pier number fifty five general perico jimenez villablanca falcon a passenger from cartagena the general was between a clay bank and a bay in complexion had a forty two inch waist and stood five feet four with his dubarry heels he had the moustache of a shooting gallery proprietor he wore the full dress of a texas congressman and had the important aspect of an uninstructed delegate general falcon had enough english under his hat to enable him to inquire his way to the street in which el refugio stood when he reached that neighborhood he saw a sign before a respectable red brick house that read hotel espanol in the window was a card in spanish aqui si habla espanol the general entered sure of a congenial port in the cosy office was mrs o'brien the proprietress she had blonde oh unimpeachably blonde hair for the rest she was amiability and ran largely two inches around general falcon brushed the floor with his broad-brimmed hat and emitted a quantity of spanish the syllables sounding like firecrackers gently popping their way down the string of a bunch spanish or dago asked mrs o'brien pleasantly i am a colombian madam said the general proudly i speak the spanish the advertisement in your window say the spanish he is spoken here how is that well you've been speaking it ain't you 
said the madam i'm sure i can't at the hotel espagnol general falcone engaged rooms and established himself at dusk he sauntered out upon the streets to view the wonders of this roaring city of the north as he walked he thought of the wonderful golden hair of madame o'brien it is here said the general to himself no doubt in his own language that one shall find the most beautiful signoras in the world i have not in my columbia viewed among our beauties one so fair but no it is not for the general falcone to think of beauty it is my country that claims my devotion at the corner of broadway and the little rialto the general became involved the street cars bewildered him and the fender of one upset him against a push-cart laden with oranges a cab-driver missed him an inch with a hub and poured barbarous execrations upon his head he scrambled to the sidewalk and skipped again in terror when the whistle of a peanut roaster puffed a hot scream in his ear valgame dios what devil's city is this as the general fluttered out of the streamers of passers like a wounded snipe he was marked simultaneously as game by two hunters one was bully maguire whose system of sport required the use of a strong arm and the misuse of an eight-inch piece of lead pipe the other nimrod of the asphalt was spider kelly a sportsman with more refined methods in pouncing upon their self-evident prey mr kelly was a shade the quicker his elbow fended accurately the onslaught of mr maguire go on he commanded harshly i saw it first maguire slunk away awed by superior intelligence pardon me said mr kelly to the general but you got balled up in the shuffle didn't you let me assist you he picked up the general's hat and brushed the dust from it the ways of mr kelly could not but succeed the general bewildered and dismayed by the resounding streets welcomed his deliverer as a caballero with a most disinterested heart i have a desire said the general to return to the hotel of o'brien in which i am stop caramba senor there is a loudness and rapidness of going and coming in the city of this nueva york mr kelly's politeness would not suffer the distinguished colombian to brave the dangers of the return unaccompanied at the door of the hotel espagnol they paused a little lower down on the opposite side of the street shone the modest illuminated sign of el refugio mr kelly to whom few streets were unfamiliar knew the place exteriorly as a dago joint all foreigners mr kelly classed under the two heads of dagos and frenchmen he proposed to the general that they repair thither and substantiate their acquaintance with a liquid foundation an hour later found general falcone and mr kelly seated at a table in the conspirators corner of el refugio bottles and glasses were between them for the tenth time the general confided the secret of his mission to the estados unidos he was here he declared to purchase arms two thousand stands of winchester rifles for the colombian revolutionists he had drafts in his pocket drawn by the cartagena bank on its new york correspondent for twenty five thousand dollars at other tables other revolutionists were shouting their political secrets to their fellow plotters but none was as loud as the general he pounded the table he hallooed for some wine he roared to his friend that his errand was a secret one and not to be hinted at to a living soul mr kelly himself was stirred to sympathetic enthusiasm he grasped the general's hand across the table monsieur he said earnestly i don't know where this country of yours is but i'm for it i guess it must be a branch of the united states though for the poetry guys and the school marms call us columbia too sometimes it's a lucky thing for you that you butted into me tonight 
i'm the only man in new york that can get this gun deal through for you the secretary of war of the united states is me best friend he's in the city now and i'll see him for you tomorrow in the meantime monsieur you keep them drafts tight in your inside pocket i'll call you tomorrow and take you to see him say that ain't the district of columbia you're talking about is it concluded mr kelly with a sudden qualm you can't capture that with no two thousand guns it's been tried with more no 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 exclaimed the general it is the republic of columbia it is a great republic on the top side of america the south yes yes all right said mr kelly reassured now suppose we trek along home and go bye-bye i'll write to the secretary tonight and make a date with him it's a ticklish job to get guns out of new york mccluskey himself can't do it they parted at the door of the hotel espagnol the general rolled his eyes at the moon and sighed it is a great country your new wave of york he said truly the cars in the streets devastate one and the engine that cooks the nuts terribly makes a squeak in the ear but ah signor kelly the signoras with hair of much goldness and admirable fatness they are magnificus muy magnificus kelly went to the nearest telephone booth and called up mccreary's cafe far up on broadway he asked for jimmy dunn is that jimmy dunn asked kelly yes came the answer you're a liar sang back kelly joyfully you're the secretary of war wait there till i come up i've got the finest thing down here in the way of a fish you've ever baited for it's a colorado maduro with a gold band around it and free coupons enough to buy a red hall lamp and a statuette of psyche rubbering in the brook i'll be up on the next car jimmy dunn was an a m of crookdom he was an artist in the confidence line he never saw a bludgeon in his life and he scorned knockout drops in fact he would have set nothing before an intended victim but the purest of drinks if it had been possible to procure such a thing in new york it was the ambition of spider kelly to elevate himself into jimmy's class these two gentlemen held a conference that night at mccreary's kelly explained he's as easy as a gumshoe he's from the island of columbia where there's a strike or a feud or something going on and they've sent him up here to buy two thousand winchesters to arbitrate the thing with he showed me two drafts for ten thousand each and one for five thousand dollars on a bank here it's truth jimmy i felt real mad with him because he didn't have it in thousand dollar bills and hand it to me on a silver waiter now we've got to wait till he goes to the bank and gets the money for us they talked it over for two hours and then dunn said bring him to number broadway at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon in due time kelly called at the hotel espagnol for the general he found the wily warrior engaged in delectable conversation with mrs o'brien the secretary of war is waiting for us said kelly the general tore himself away with an effort ah signor he said with a sigh duty makes a call but signor the signoras of your estados unidos how beauties for exemplification take you la madame o'brien qui magnifica she is one goddess one juno what you call one oxide juno now mr kelly was a wit and better men have been shriveled by the fire of their own imagination sure he said with a grin but you mean a peroxide juno don't you mrs o'brien heard and lifted an auriferous head her business-like eye rested for an instant upon the disappearing form of mr kelly except in street cars one should never be unnecessarily rude to a lady when the gallant columbian and his escort arrived at the broadway address they were held in an anteroom for half an hour and then admitted into a well-equipped office where a distinguished-looking man with a smooth face wrote at a desk general falcone was presented 
to the secretary of war of the united states and his mission made known by his old friend mr kelly ah columbia said the secretary significantly when he was made to understand i'm afraid there will be a little difficulty in that case the president and i differ in our sympathies there he prefers the established government while i the secretary gave the general a mysterious but encouraging smile you of course know general falcone that since the tammany war an act of congress has been passed requiring all manufactured arms and ammunition exported from this country to pass through the war department now if i can do anything for you i will be glad to do so to oblige my old friend mr kelly but it must be in absolute secrecy as the president as i have said does not regard favorably the efforts of your revolutionary party in columbia i will have my orderly bring a list of the available arms now in the warehouse the secretary struck a bell and an orderly with the letters a d t on his cap stepped promptly into the room bring me schedule b of the small arms inventory said the secretary the orderly quickly returned with a printed paper the secretary studied it closely i find he said that in warehouse nine of government stores there is shipment of two thousand stands of winchester rifles that were ordered by the sultan of morocco who forgot to send the cash with his order our rule is that legal tender money must be paid down at the time of purchase my dear kelly your friend general falcone shall have this lot of arms if he desires it at the manufacturer's price and you will forgive me i am sure if i curtail our interview i am expecting the japanese minister and charles murphy every moment as one result of this interview the general was deeply grateful to his esteemed friend mr kelly as another the nimble secretary of war was extremely busy during the next two days buying empty rifle cases and filling them with bricks which were then stored in a warehouse rented for that purpose as still another when the general returned to the hotel espagnol mrs o'brien went up to him plucked a thread from his lapel and said say senor i don't want to butt in but what does that monkey-faced cat-eyed rubber-necked tin-horn tough want with you sangre de ma vida exclaimed the general impossible it is that you speak of my good friend senor kelly come into the summer garden said mrs o'brien i want to have a talk with you let us suppose that an hour has elapsed and you say said the general that for the sum of eighteen thousand dollars can be purchased the furnishment of the house and the lease of one year with this garden so lovely so resembling unto the patios of my cara colombia and dirt cheap at that sighed the lady ah dios breathed general falcone what to me is war and politics this spot is one paradise my country it have other brave heroes to continue the fighting what to me should be glory in the shooting of mons ah no it is here i have found one angel let us buy the hotel espagnol and you shall be mine and the money shall not be waste on guns mrs o'brien rested her blonde pompadour against the shoulder of the colombian patriot oh senor she sighed happily ain't you terrible two days later was the time appointed for the delivery of the arms to the general the boxes of supposed rifles were stacked in the rented warehouse and the secretary of war sat upon them waiting for his friend kelly to fetch the victim mr kelly hurried at the hour to the hotel espagnol he found the general behind the desk adding up accounts i have decided said the general to buy not guns i have to-day by the insides of this hotel and there shall be marrying of the general perico jimenez villavanca falcon with la madame o'brien mr kelly almost strangled say you old bald-headed bottle of shoe-polish he sputtered you're a swindler that's what you are 
you've bought a boarding house with money belonging to your infernal country wherever it is ah said the general footing up a column that is what you call politics war and revolution they are not nice yes it is not best that one shall always follow minerva no it is of quite desirable to keep hotels and be with that juno that ox-eyed juno ah what hair of the gold it is that she have mr kelly choked again ah signor kelly said the general feelingly and finally is it that you have never eaten of the corned beef hash that madame o'brien she make if you like the video put a like subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to not miss our new videos